Hi, this is Omai from Spitfire Audio with a demo using only Albion Neo. And if we have a quick look into the library itself, it comes with a contact and it's divided into five different parts. You have Albion Neo Orchestra with strings, woodwinds and brass. You have Brunel loops, a harmonium, Seglet textures with lovely organic sounding patches and Stevenson Steam Band with synthesized sounds in there. What I think is amazing about this library is that you have these orchestral sounds and loops and hybrid patches all in one, like you do with the other Albion libraries. But this one has actually been recorded with a smaller ensemble, so it can be a lot more intimate sounding and you get all these little details from the individual players as well. And it also has this overall modern and very progressive tone to it. So let's have a listen to see what sort of patches you have in there and what they can sound like. So I first went to the Segla textures and all the sounds you can find within there are actually from the Albionia recording session of the orchestra. So all these incredible textures you can hear are coming from the instruments being pulled through different effects. You can find that within our eDNA engine, meaning you can further manipulate the sound. The first one I've got up here is Space Tundra. incredibly lush sound. Because of the nature of this particular patch, I wanted to give it a lot of space so you can actually hear what it's doing, which is, for example, the pulsing at the tail of this one. I layered this one with a patch called Frozen Lake. And I'm letting this play in octaves throughout the first half of this piece. But when I do something like that, and I think it's appropriate, then I try to put as much movement in there as possible. Otherwise, I find if you have one sound at the same level all the time for that longer period, it gets very monotonous and you get very bored of that sound very quickly. So you can see in my expression, I'm slowly fading in and then I'm sort of 
dipping back in and out. The next patch that I've added was one of my favorite ones. It's called the Big Twist. The string sliding up in fifths and sliding down in fifths at the same time. And whilst I wanted to build on what I have here, I wanted to keep this space, especially on these two patches over here. The idea was to add on this texturally, adding some strings, for example. These are really cool. There are some detuned longs. There's something about it I love when they're playing in octaves. I think it's the way they clash against one another as opposed to when it's just one note. Also layer that with some tremolos. Over here I have done two more Segla patches. One which is a war horn. And these ones called Almost Nothing, which evolve slowly throughout. So I'm just layering different patches and pads to create its own sound world together. If we have a look into the GUI, I just want to show you that the uh, expression in this case is actually controlling going from sound A to sound B. So what the eDNA engine allows you to do is actually load two different sounds. And it's at the moment just going back between those two. Again, keeping in line with this movement throughout. And then I thought now that I have these orchestral type pads, I wanted to add some different elements to this one too. So I opened some Brunel loops and the Brunel loops are made up of a band consisting of a drum kit, percussion, synthesizers, guitars, and violins. And what you get is patches where the whole band is playing together, but then also the individual stems of that band so you can pick out different elements of that. If I look at the percussive element, I've just automated the panning, so it's going left to right and back. I've also added some delay on here, so I'm using this echo delay from Logic. This one's an eighth, and then the other one is playing in quarter triplets. It's sort of creating this flutter effect. So for this section, I pulled in the different elements and let them slowly fade in. Here I've got a guitar. Which is then being joined by a kick. And then over here, I have a low synth, which I'm using as a bass. So that's my first section.
Here I'm bringing everything down, starting with the second part. And I'm using these best ever woods pads. And those are being slowly joined by the space tundra. I think this is such a lovely combination. It gives it a lot of space and depth to it. And again, I'm trying to build up texturally. So I have another woods patch actually coming in here and these detuned suburbs patches. One of these is actually an arpeggiated sound that I wanted to show you, which I'm using from the Brunel loops. And the idea was for the second part to build again, but this time using rhythmic elements for this. I'm introducing the kick again over here, this time playing double time. Compared to the first half. And just to single that out, I also left in the same echo delay on there. So it has this extra bounce to it that I liked. Another element that helps with it were these gated strings here. To which I added a bass. So I'm coming back with the Brunel loop, the low synth over here. And there was one bit that I really wanted to highlight, which are these three chords that the woodwinds are playing. This here. I'm playing that with the bass as well. A couple of other elements that were helping with the rhythmic feel is one of which I really wanted to use, at least to show you. Um, I got really excited when I saw that we had now visible the arpeggiator within the eDNA engine. Without. And you can change the rate here and the duration of the note length as well, which is really cool. And keeping it homogenous with the soundscape, I wanted to bring back some of the strings again. So I'm using these spiccatos here, just played in something very simple. But I then also added a delay on this one and I thought it sat really nicely within it. And then one without effect, which is a super lovely short brush sound. And as a little embellishment, I'm also bringing back the big twist very briefly. For the ending, I'm just fading everything out slowly. Let's have a quick look at my panning. I just made sure that everything was balanced and that everything had enough space to sit in. And otherwise, 
that was it. So let's listen to the whole piece again. I hope this was helpful to give you a little insight of what this library can do. However, there's loads more videos you can check out if you want to learn more about it. If you like this video, you can press like. If you want to be notified about the next one, you can press that bell button. Otherwise, see you later.